Hey guys, my name is Priyan Shah. I haven't uploaded a video in a while, but I just got a new camera, so I thought it was right that I come back to YouTube and I give you guys a video on the five things that you have to do when you get a new camera. These are just five things that you should do to get more comfortable with your camera so you can get better quality videos and photos out of it. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing you have to do actually comes before you buy your camera. It's research. It's so crucial to weigh your options and find the best camera that fits your needs. Whether it's shooting weddings, cars, sports, or just silly little skits that you make with your kids at home, even YouTube videos, you gotta find what works for you. Don't worry about what anybody else has. Go on YouTube or do a quick Google search and find the camera that fits your need. That way you can make an informed decision before you decide to drop $4,000 on a camera that you never even did your research on. All right, so the second thing that you have to do when you get a new camera is you gotta dig into the menu. This is where you get to know your camera inside and out. If you don't explore your camera settings, you're gonna miss out on some features that are gonna change the game for you. All right, so picture this, you're at a wedding, you're the photographer, you're taking pictures of the bride while she's saying her vows. But in your head, you're like, damn, my shutter is way too loud for this. I wish I could turn it off. Guess what? Sony cameras, I don't, I can't speak on Canon, but Sony cameras have a silent shooting feature. But if you didn't go through your menu and figure out your settings, you wouldn't have known that. So when you're in a position like that and you know the inside out of your camera, this is gonna help you tremendously. So I suggest you invest your time into reading the owner's manual or watching a YouTube video about your camera's menu settings, whatever works for you, because this is gonna help you so much, especially on jobs with clients where they need a specific thing from you and you don't know if your camera's capable of it. You gotta know, right? You gotta know the ins and outs of your camera. Let's say you said no to the job and you could have made a thousand dollars doing that job, for example. So it's, it's a very important thing. All right, so next up, the, one of the best features in modern day cameras are custom button layouts and memory recall. Custom buttons have saved me countless times. When I'm on the go shooting a basketball game and I need to change the white balance a little bit or change my drive mode, I can do that without having to go into my menu, so, which is such a good thing to have on hand. Because for example, while shooting a basketball game, if I miss the dunk, then that's, that's on me, right? I need the dunk for the video. I need the, the game winning three for the video, right? If I miss these things, because I'm changing the white balance in my settings, then that's on me. And my client's not gonna hire me again if I miss the most important part of the game. So I suggest spending some time configuring these buttons to fit whatever settings you use the most while shooting, whether it's ISO, drive mode, white balance, doesn't matter what it is. If it's gonna save you time, why not do it? And if you don't understand how to do it, there's a bunch of YouTube videos. I can link one down below that will teach you how to do this and give you an example of what kind of layout that you could use if you have no idea what you want to do with it. And memory recall is almost the same thing, but it has to do with saved settings. So my camera has three memory recall settings. One of them is 4K24, the other is 4K60, and then there's 1080, 120. I find myself switching through these a lot when I'm shooting sports, so I have them set so I can just toggle between them really quick so I don't have to waste any time configuring my settings and miss a shot, just like I mentioned before. And once again, I'll link a YouTube video down below so you guys can understand these things in depth and how to configure them. Next up, you want to think about investing into some accessories. I'm not saying max out your credit card, getting a gimbal and a monitor and all this stuff that's so expensive and you don't necessarily need. I'm saying go for the basics, the budget friendly things like an ND filter or a tripod that's going to up your levels so much without hurting your bank account. For example, my footage right now would look like this without an ND filter. So an ND filter is what allows me to record videos outside using whatever settings I want without having an overexposed image. So 100% invest into these accessories. It's gonna make your workflow smoother and the overall quality of your work is gonna be higher. And finally, the only thing you can do to actually properly learn your camera is to go out and shoot. Shoot yourself going on a walk, play basketball with your friends, take a photo of your dog, make a YouTube video, something like that to just get used to your camera and learn your camera. You wanna do this rather than doing it at a client shoot because the risk here is so little. It honestly does not matter if you mess up a YouTube video or a video of your dog. So learn your camera, figure out your new custom buttons, figure out how to use your new accessories that you got, and honestly, just have fun with it. If you enjoyed this video, if this was helpful, leave a like, help me out by pressing subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next week because I am gonna try and post more videos. We'll see about that though.